guys, and welcome to episode 95 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. This is the last episode of what has been a very interesting, up and down, emotional year, right? 2020 has been many things, and I hope that in all of that, it's been some good things for you as well. I am recording uh, three days after Christmas. It is the 28th of December, well, three days after Christmas Day, because guys, Christmas is not over until the 6th of January, which is Three Kings Day, and I will be celebrating that here with my husband. And uh, we'll just do uh, several little things, like my grandmother would always give out little treat bags full of florecitas and gummies and hot chocolate and some vanilla crackers, so I have to go source those. And my other grandmother, may she rest in peace, um, she passed away last year, as you guys know, and she would always give out arroz con dulce and almohabanas. Arroz con dulce is a rice pudding, it's wonderful, it's made with coconut milk, delicious. And almohabanas are rice fritters, so you take rice flour, you add milk, you add cheese, and you add an egg, a little bit of baking powder, stir it all together, boom, fry it. Delicious, I guarantee you. So I will be making some of that for Three Kings Day as well. And I know that a lot of you wanted, well, I don't know if a lot of you, but a couple of you said that you hoped that I would be uploading the Christmas meal that I made for myself and our neighbors. They're part of our bubble. I've talked about her before. She's the one who's undergoing chemotherapy right now. And we had fun. We ate a lot and I was expecting them to take leftovers. So I cooked food for an army and that is how much food is left over. <laughs> So I will be freezing some of that and, well, frozen some of that. And anyway, all this to say that I hope that you had a little bit of joy Christmas Day. Yes, it's been different for all of us, but you know, there's still some good things that you can take out of them. And I want to thank you for joining me on my Vlogmas adventure and for joining me as I prepared some of the family traditions, which honestly all include a lot, a lot of food. And I've discovered new traditions like hot chocolate corners and homemade marshmallows. So thank you to my Instagram crafty family and my YouTube crafty family and just all of you. Muchas gracias. So today what I wanted to talk to you about was kind of a wrap up of the whole year because it's like I said, been an interesting one and I wanted to share that with you and just do a final recap and hear how the year has been for you, uh, crafty or otherwise, in the comments below. Speaking of below, in the description box you will find all the links and appropriate, um, <laughs> yeah, links to everything that I am talking about. So 2020, as I said, has been a really interesting year. It's been, I think, the longest year that I can remember as well as the shortest year that I can remember. It just packed a lot into 52 weeks, 12 months, 365 days. It packed a punch into each and every one of those. And I don't know how you started 2020, but well, I ended 2019 with a funeral. My grandmother's on my mom's side, she passed away. So it was a bit of a solemn Christmas, but also just trying to be there for my mom, my sister, you know, as a family. My sister and I were down there, and it was still. A good Christmas given all that because we held our grandmother close and we cooked the things that she loved to eat so that was the end of 2019 I don't know how you ended it <laughs> but anyway I started 2020 with a bit of a crippling fear of turning 30 um, I was in a job that I absolutely hated and you know, I was still wondering what I really wanted to do in my life, and here I am turning 30 with just no clue as to what I was doing. And to be honest, I, I really thought that turning 30 was gonna be the end of my life. I imagine that at some point in a previous life, I died at 30 and I still have that fear, 
but I attempted to turn it around by including you in my celebrations and I did a little um, Instagram highlights, well, I did a series of Instagram stories that are now saved in the highlights called 30 Before 30 and it was 30 little stories of things I have learned in my 30 years, things I remember, and I, it was just a bit of a turn down memory lane to try and bring back some of that joy that we sometimes lose when we get involved in our day-to-day -day, day -day adult life. Uh, you know, things as a child, they're, they're so much simpler, or we understand things differently, whichever one it is. I wanted to remember some of that and kind of embrace my inner child in the way that she was unapologetically herself. Have I, did any of you kind of feel that this year or you know at some point of a milestone birthday? Please let me know. Um, but yeah, so I involved you guys in that and then I also did a birthday giveaway and I asked you guys to enter it by just giving me some advice that you wish people had turned had told you when you turned 30. And if you still want to check that out, I will link that video in the I thingy here or down below so that you can have a uh, read on those comments because they are some very nice, thoughtful and wonderful comments. So thank you again for those, even though it's been, it's been a while since we last talked about being 30. And then a week after my birthday, I was laid off. Uh, it was the start of the pandemic in the United States, or at least when it was acknowledged that uh, this thing is dangerous and we all need to take precaution and just have a better plan as to how we're going to deal with this threat. And that threat was, of course, COVID-19. So due to that, I was laid off in March, March 23rd. So literally a couple of days after my birthday. So that was, that was interesting, 10 days after my birthday. Um, in any case, when you are laid off, it's, it's a bit of a depressing thought. It's scary, how are you gonna pay bills? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna deal with life? All I felt was relief because honestly, I, I do not know if I would have quit that job on my own. I mean, because of that job, I was able to buy a new car. Well, new to me, it's a used car, but it was new to me. And it was something that I was very proud of, a car to my name that I was paying off. And I was able to help my husband with the house costs. And I was putting food on the table, of course, not that we were gonna go hungry if I lost my job because my husband, we are very lucky, has a very good job. And he switched jobs during the pandemic and he found a better one that makes him a lot happier. So there's also that. But yeah, that job, even though I hated it, I hated every minute of every day that I ever spent in it, paid the bills. And it allowed me to have a little bit of money to kind of see if I could jumpstart my own crafty business. And what I endeavored to do was to become a blogger. I wanted to have a blog that people found value in and that they wanted to share the content and participate and make the things that I was talking about. So essentially, I wanted to have a blog that would bring people joy with my patterns. And I had started it way back when in, yeah, way back when in 2019, I had started it, but I, I hadn't really committed to it. So once I lost my job, I said, this, this is it. This is the moment where you commit to it and you do everything that you possibly can and beyond to make it work. You hustle and hustle and hustle and eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches if you have to. So anyway, that's what I did. I bought the Sorella Method blogging course and I realized that a lot of the things she was talking about, I was already attempting to do on my own. I just needed to get better at my photography and keep in mind that what I am doing is becoming a crochet stylist in a way. Um, I like to view myself as a crochet designer and crochet stylist because I have to take, well, I want to take really good pictures of my product because I spend so many hours designing and then just to take a low lighting, pixelated 
noisy bit, um, picture is, is not the way to go, you know? So, yes, I, I took that course and I started working on becoming better at my photography and creating what I really thought was going to be valuable content for people. Um, some of the most popular patterns on my website are the crochet summer fan top and then we have the shield maiden top or don't say de la flor because I blog in English or at least my patterns from a certain point on were in English and Spanish because I am Puerto Rican and I was born speaking, well, I wasn't born speaking Spanish but it was the first language that I learned. However, I do feel more comfortable designing in crochet designing and crochet, designing in English. I, I do feel more comfortable and I can't deny that, but I wanted my patterns to be as accessible as possible. And if I spoke better French, I would probably attempt to write my patterns in French if somebody asked for it. But anyway, <laughs> the point of all this to say was that I was investing a lot more time. It was my full-time job. Blogging became my full-time job. And what does um, designing a pattern actually entail for when you're trying to publish it? Well, you have the idea in your head, then you do the schematic, then you do the gauge swatch. And I have learned that before actually making the piece, you should grade everything and work from that. It's much easier than making the pattern and then grading it. However, I still feel more comfortable crocheting a piece of the pattern, like a full piece of the pattern, doing my gauge swatch based on, based on that after I block that section, and then keep working on it. Because what I like to design are crochet garments, as you well know. And in garments, sometimes your swatch will lie because it's not taking into account the weight it's going to have. So it'll stretch more than you're thinking when all that weight is on it. So that's why sometimes what I will do is have all the measurements that I want to cater to or that I feel comfortable catering to was a better description. And then I will work up the piece that fits me, block it and once that gauge has been established, work from there. So I published a total of 44 posts in my blog this year and 21 of those were patterns. And that includes patterns in English and Spanish. So technically there's a total of 11 patterns in English, 11 patterns in Spanish. And each of those patterns represents 60 to 100 hours of work, depending on how complicated the pattern was. And some of them even include tutorials. So those are a bit more involved because I have to make up the full piece and then I make up the piece in the video tutorial. So it's more materials, more time consuming and involves editing. Um, so yeah, some of, like I said, the most popular patterns are my crochet summer fan top, my doncella de la flor, my shield maiden, my flower duster tejido, and then my crochet flower duster. Those are the top um, five. Did I mention that right? Yeah, those are my top five crochet patterns. And I will have post a little parade of pictures here so you don't just hear me talking and have no idea what it is I'm talking about. In terms of other patterns, I did publish my first paid for pattern, uh, which was a collaboration with Claudia of Crochet Luna and Luna Yarns, and I did a kind of 70s inspired crochet vest, and I did it in her yarn. It's so warm and toasty that I'm wondering why I'm not wearing it right now. For those of you wondering, I am wearing the Adalong and it, the Adalong is a crochet DK weight sweater designed by Addy Day Designs. It's available for purchase on Ravelry, if I am not mistaken. And I am wearing the test version of it because mom, who's my new newscraft, I'm sure you've heard me talk about her before. She uh, was a pattern tester for this design and she gave me the finished piece. <laughs> okay. So back to patterns, and I also designed a um, 
crochet sock which is available now for purchase through the crochet for me bundle which is a bundle that i collaborated with it with a whole bunch of other crochet designers it's 56 patterns by 46 designers it's available from the 26th of december up to the 31st of december and that is it and the cost is 27 dollars, which means it's about 50 cents each pattern so I think it's a really, really good deal. And I'm not just saying it because my crochet socks are there, which I just realized I've never shown. So I'm gonna jump out, pause it, jump out, and go get those socks and show them to you. And we are back. So these socks that I'm holding up right now in my lovely wooden sock blockers are the tea leaves crochet socks and they are the pattern that I designed to participate in the crochet for me bundle now this yarn is focus a lightly variegated yarn it's got shades of green like a forest green a moss green and then it's got shades of like a raspberry brown and they're a little bit stretched out because I slept in them last night. It was really cold and my feet were freezing. So these are a pair of shorty crochet socks and they have my mushroomy type toe. And then they are made completely in squished single crochets backwards and forwards. And then we just have a standard short row heel and a tiny little cup um, leg and cuff. You can of course make them as long as you want. And I had a lot of fun designing these. They are called the Tea Leaves Crochet Socks because the yarn is from Melissa of Acorn Willows and it's the Tea Leaves colorway. So those, I really loved. I really loved making these and I loved the yarn. It's so, I don't know if it's slightly variegated or slightly speckled, but it's perfect for crochet. Um, and I paired it with a bit of a contrasting toe, which you don't have to do, but I did. And the contrasting toe is from Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarns. It was a burrow mini skein set. I do not think she dyes yarn anymore, which, which is a shame. But those are the Tea Leaves Crochet Socks. Uh, they are available in three sizes. Even though I honestly feel that for crochet socks, you can mostly get away with using one size and then just making it longer or shorter. Because the way I design crochet socks is basically four inches less than your desired sock length. You start your gusset and then you go to your um, heel and then you keep working on the leg. So. The reason that I provide more than one size is because some people have wider feet and some people have narrower feet, but for the most part, I think you can just get away with using that one size. So for reference, my foot, I use a size seven and a half, eight shoe, and my desired sock length is 8.75. Oh, and this also comes with a tutorial to help you along, but you really have to um, you only get the tutorial if you pay for the pattern, which is included in the bundle. And yeah, I was very, very excited to be asked to participate in that. I think between being commissioned and then being paid for a crochet pattern, that is my second biggest accomplishment this year, if I do say so myself. And in terms of YouTube, I produced a total of 24 podcast videos, not counting the vlogs that I've been doing in December, which I think I was doing about one or two a week, depending on the week. So yeah, that's, I thought was a lot of content. Well, I sat down and I did the math. So we've got 24 podcast videos at around 40 minutes each summer, 45 minutes, some are 36, so I just gave it a round number of 40 minutes. And that is about 960 minutes of podcasts. And then I have 142.92, so let's round that up to 143 minutes of vlogs. And I have 
339 minutes worth of tutorials that you um, can see that are public. I'm not including tutorials that I did for my two sock patterns, which is the Endor Moon Crochet Sock Pattern and the Tea Leaves Crochet Socks. Those are only available when you purchase the patterns. And that is a total of 24.02 hours of creative content. And so, yeah, I think that is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. And I, I still enjoy it. I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. So that is the wrap up for our year 2020. I want to thank you for joining me along on this journey. And now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the things that I said I would have accomplished for the year. Because these, yes, are things I've accomplished, but I haven't talked about any of the crafty endeavors apart from the um, my full-time job, which is crochet and submitting designs, hopefully, that'll get to magazines and things like that. So at the beginning of the year, I had talked to you about a hope basket. And that was a basket that I had filled with projects that I hoped to make during 2020. I have that hope basket next to me, but it is now full of projects that I am working on. It is not full of projects that I will be working on that I hope to finish. It's also got my favorite set, the Hotel of Bees shawl and the angel hat. And I love them because they're both made in Little Bean Loves Yarn and it's the Mooney colorway. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I didn't realize how much stuff I had in here. So what is left in my hope basket? In my hope basket, we have this yarn. It's Crimson Heather. It's showing up a lot more Christmas red than it is in real life. It's more of a wine red, more like a dull, dulled red. It's not so much, it, yeah, it's crimson. <laughs> it's not as Christmas red, it's showing up. And this is DK weight, 274 yards, 100 grams, cloud-borne fibers, 45% alpaca, 25% merino wool, 30% silk. And I had bought this on Craftsy when they also sold yarn. And then we also have the Fiber Co. Canopy Fingering Fruits of the Forest, a soft blend of bamboo baby alpaca and merino wool. That is three hanks of fingering weight yarn in a light sky gray blue. It's showing up a little more bluebell blue in the camera than it is in real life. It's a bit duller than that. And this was in a Knit Crate box that I received a long, long time ago. So this beautiful baby was going to be, or is going to be at some point, the Balance Shawl by Emma Potter. And this one is going to be a pair of mitts. So let me just go and bring out the book where it's located in so we can talk about it. So for the more, it's not even duck egg, it's like a gray light sky blue that is from the Fiber Co. I wanted to make the balance shawl, which comes in Emma Potter's Potter and Bloom her Hanging Rock Designs book, and it's that one that's featured on the cover in a gorgeous kind of golden mustard, and it is a V-shaped shawl, and I have exactly the 150 grams it calls for. Now, it's been my experience that my gauge tends to be really loose when I'm using fingering weight and a small hook, so I'm going to have to reduce my hook size to be able to make this, and once I have made the balance shawl, I will have made every single pattern in the Hanging Rock Designs book. Just look at that beauty. I will have made the open socks and I will have made the falls scarf, which you guys saw in a reel that I showed. 
Anyway, back to the Hope basket. The other thing that's left, as I said, is the Crimson Heather DK weight yarn, and I wanted to make a pattern from the Making Winter book, a Huga inspired guide to surviving the winter months from Emma Mitchell. And this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book that my husband got for me a while ago. And it's got recipes, it's got um, projects that you can make, like keeping a plant journal and preserving your autumn flora. And it's got so many designs. And some of them I've even made, like this plum orange blondie. I've made that. Um, but I am looking specifically for a pair of fingerless mitts that you can make in this book. And, oh my god, this book is so gorgeous that I just get sucked into it every time I see it. It's, I can't get over how pretty the photography and the layout. So these are the mitts that I want to make. They are the Hawthorne wrist warmers and you need one hundred two skeins of 100 grams or approximately 490 yards of DK weight yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook. So these gorgeous mitts. I wanted to make them in this bright red color for Christmas. Um, so those are the, well, one of four patterns that I didn't manage to make this year. I just honestly didn't find the time to make them. Things that I, but I, I do want, I still do want to make them. So I will probably take a little bit of break between once I finish the Oddman's Cardi Cow and starting new designs to make them. Although then I feel guilty because I'm supposed to be doing work crochet, not pleasure crochet, but you can have a little bit of a pleasure project every now and then, can't you? So things that I intend to complete between now and the 6th of January are as follows. The cardigan for the Oddman's Cardi Cal and my husband's socks. Now, this is a basket full of the Oddman's Cardi Cal stuff. And can I say I am a basket project convert? I now feel the need to own baskets for any large future projects. So I'm going to be holding up the Oddman's uh, cardigan. That's what mom and I are calling it because we were hosting or we are hosting the Oddman's Cardi Cow, which is a very lighthearted cow. We'll probably end it sometime in the new year. But the idea was to use Rosina, who's Scenes and Rogers, her schematics to making a version of the J.W. Anderson cardigan. And I have since the last time I did a joint podcast with mom for the Oddman's Cardi Cow, I have since finished my body of the cardigan and I did my ribbing and I have a sleeve. I'm missing the cuff on the sleeve, but I'm going to start another sleeve. Now, you might have noticed that there is a blue eyelash sparkle in this cardigan that looks like it doesn't belong. But it does. Oh, does it belong? I love it. I love it. I love it so much. And also, <laughs> if I would have had enough of this, I would have totally crocheted the sleeves entirely out of this gorgeous eyelash yarn. In fact, I am now feeling the urge to design a plain body sweater and then just poof, eyelash sleeves. Mm, I think that would look so gorgeous. Uh, okay. So, um, if you want more information on the construction of this cardigan or how we went about crocheting it, then I'm going to link down the two episodes that or two specials that we did of the Ottoman's Cardi Cow. I'm going to link them down below. I did, they are in Mine and Muse Crafts channel, so if you follow her, you may or may not have seen it. But I have mostly used style craft, and then I have a mix of acrylic and wool yarns. I undid a hat that I never used to make this gorgeous peach for the sleeves, which I used twice, and now I'm going to use it for the other sleeve, which I literally only cast on or started. 
So that's the cardigan, which I think will get finished. Maybe not before New Year's, but between now and the 6th of January, I can manage that. And these other ones, my husband's socks, definitely need to be finished by the 6th of January. Uh, I have finished one, so there's that. And I am on the heel flap of the other one. These are the Lightning Socks, a gorgeous, fun, and just all around, did I say gorgeous? I'm repeating myself. Pattern by Sandra of Cherry Heart, who actually, she very, very kindly gifted this pattern to me. I had written to her asking if the pattern was available and I just hadn't seen it because I wanted to make them for my husband. And she said, you're actually the second person that asked about that pattern, so I'm gonna go ahead and write it up. And when she published it, right as I was gonna go purchase it, it just popped up in my Ravelry. So that was very, very nice of her and I am super thankful. So thankful, I really am. Anyway, so this is the sort of finished one. And the reason it's not finished is because when my husband tried him on, his big toe poked out through here. I didn't realize his feet were, like the toe part of his feet was longer than two inches. Hindsight, I should have probably measured that, but I was just going very slowly, adding the, adding some extra rows and decreases, and I left it without finishing because I didn't want to get second sock syndrome. So in my mind, if I stopped knitting on the socks before I mean, if I stopped knitting on the socks without completing them and then started the new ones, I wouldn't get second sock syndrome. And I haven't gotten second sock syndrome exactly. I love working on these socks. And can we talk about the yarn? This yarn is so, so wonderful. It's Patton's Croy socks, which I am now convinced should come in a thousand more colors because it will be my go-to sock yarn. I feel about this like people feel about Opal or Regia. This is so gorgeous. And it is their something color. Oh my god, I'm making a mess in here. It's their blue striped rag colorway. It's a very, it's a thick fingering weight yarn. I think you have 360 yards of yarn per 100 grams. It comes in 50 gram balls though. And it's about priced at about six something a ball but I got those in a super Christmas sale at $2.50 per ball, so I should have stocked up. I didn't know I was gonna love it so much. So that is projects that need to get finished before the 6th of January. And that is all the crafty content I have for you today. Uh, we've wrapped up our year. If you have any questions about any of the things that I talked about, please leave, leave them down below. I will answer any questions you have about blogging as a business and producing videos and what I think are the most important things when you want to do a vlog cast because I think that should be the proper term for it. We are after all sort of face to face. You're not just hearing my voice and hearing me attempt to describe things. So. Yes, I just wanted to leave you with a final little thought uh, that has helped me a lot because I don't know if I've shared with you, I do suffer from imposter syndrome, something fierce. Every time somebody purchases an Etsy pattern, in my head they're just gonna hate it and it's gonna be an awful experience and I need to prepare myself to battle through it. And that's the way my brain works. I'm trying to switch that part of my brain off. So something that has helped me is that I left a space back. I, I don't have a bullet journal. I have more of a personal planner. I, I don't, I don't know. I think I'm intimidated by bullet journals because all the people I follow make such pretty bullet journals that I'm like, eh, I can't do any of that. So anyway, I did a 2020 wrap up and these are the questions that I asked myself. How have I grown? What did I accomplish? What have I learned? And 
I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so, to answer these questions. And by answering them, I do mean sit down with a pen and paper and put your thoughts there because they, it's cathartic. It's so cathartic to sit down with a pen and paper and write down everything that you are feeling and thinking. You can process it. And if you read it and it's all negative emotions, go outside with a match or a lighter, set it on fire in a safe place, please. I, I'm not encouraging you to burn down anything. Just, uh, you know, lightly burn that piece of paper or tear it to pieces and it'll feel like you are wiping your slate clean and it just feels amazing. So I encourage you to try and look at 2020 for some of the good, some of the good we have done as a community, some growth we've experienced in the community. Um, our problems will not disappear with a new year, but I think we are much more aware of them to keep working on them. And that is a good thing. Having one day after the other, sunset, sunrise, and a new chance each day to be a better person and to encourage others to be better people. So yes, those are my final thoughts for the year 2020. And I wanna thank you so, so much for being part of my crafty family this year. I know many of you lost members this year, lost family members to COVID-19 or other cases. But there are so many good things that we can appreciate too. And I think that we need to be aware of that, be grateful for what we have, but don't feel guilty for having it while others do not. Instead, help others achieve what we have. I think that's what we should do moving forward. So anyway, thank you so much for just being a part of my crafty family and for sharing a little bit of yourself and for allowing me to share some of my crafty life, some of my personal life, and some of my experiences with you. And if you feel so inclined, you can like this video, you can subscribe, you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Ravelry if you still use Ravelry, and you can, of course, follow my website. It's crochetcakes.com. All the links to what I've talked about will be found in the description box below, and I want to wish you Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. Happy New Year, guys, and Merry Christmas because it's still Christmas. Bye.